and to lead you to this is GS Man Smart, and I'm going to tell you a brand new video for tutorials of GS. Today's tutorial going to be teaching you how to do uh, something called light painting or painting with lighting or any of those terms you may have heard, but I have to call it light painting. And what it basically is essentially going to do is it's going to, you're going to have a background that's either, you know, very colorfully lighted or is, you know, mainly just one color lighted. And you're going to have basically outlines of either people or an object, and you're going to want to have those outlines shine through the background light so it looks like, you know, you have little figures being basically like exposed through the light. But you'll see what we did if you saw the uh, thumbnail image in the beginning, you'll see what um, we're going to try to do. But we're going to be showing you two examples. Um, how this can work just to give you an idea of different things you can do and I'm gonna go ahead and open up the uh, first image or well, the first background that we're gonna be using and we're gonna have this background right here it's a little too squarey for me though so I'm actually gonna just scale this out now your picture that you have probably is already the way you want it I'm just gonna make this a thousand pixels though and then we're just gonna go cut it and paste it as a new image. So if you have your image, open it up. If you need to scale it, scale it. But let's go ahead and start from here. So the first thing you need to do is obviously get your background. If you have that, you need to find objects that you want to um, create the effect with or if you the people you want to create the effect with or whatever you need now you can do this uh, uh, two ways and one of the ways is just by finding renders if you're looking for specific gaming characters maybe or specific figures then you can just type in um, render so if you're looking for an Assassin's Creed character, maybe, then you can just type in Assassin's Creed, and then the character name, and then render. Or if you're looking for specific objects, you can just type in, um, you know, basketball render, or basketball player render. There are tons of renders out there. So if you have your images or your renders, then you're going to open them as layers, which is file open as layers and then you basically just uh, click each and hold down shift to you know select more than one and then click open so they'll be open like this now if you oops if you have a render then the job is very easy in fact if you have a render the background will be cut out and uh, the subject of your image will basically have no background and you know it's pretty easy to create the effect however if you have an if you have an image that does have a background and you want to cut that person out you're going to have to render it out yourself now I have a tutorial on how to render out objects or render out people from their background if you want to see that tutorial there's an annotation on the screen right now there's also an e-card I think they're called cards, just like there's also a card linked right now, and the link to that video is also in the description. So I urge you to check that out if you don't know how to cut out a subject from a background, if you don't know how to render. Otherwise, if you have a render already, or if you already cut yours out, and it looks like this, then you're good to go. So the next thing we're going to want to do is uh, change the size of these subjects so that they're about the same size. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to grab our scale tool right now. And if you want to proportionally make it bigger or smaller, you see, if we don't proportionally make it bigger or smaller, this weird stuff starts to happen. So you want to proportionally do it, hold down shift, and then you can um, proportionally keep the aspect ratios the same. Actually, it's control, not shift. My apologies. It's control. If you hold down control or command on a Mac, your aspect ratios will stay the same. And I want to make this a little smaller. Right around there, perhaps. Yeah, right around there. 
And then I'm just going to go ahead and grab this other guy, put it right underneath this girl, and make sure that you have your a proper layer selected. And then once again, I'm just going to hold down control, try to get it the same size. Maybe a little smaller, like so. There we go. And then lastly, this layer here. See, I think that works. Yeah, that works. Now, if you want it to be perfect, you can get your little uh, ruler tool up here and you can align them accordingly. You can align them accordingly to the bottom of that ruler if you want it to be precise. And the next step is going to be to create the, your outlines. Now, the way you're going to do this is you're going to have to group these layers together. So, go ahead and merge down all of the uh, figures or all the subjects. So, when you have them all merged down, you should be able to click the eye icon here and all of them disappear. And if you click it again, they all appear. You want to get everything into one layer. So, merge everything down so that's into one layer. Don't merge it down with the background here. Only merge it down that your subjects of the image are in one layer. The next thing you want to do is right click your layer and click alpha to selection. This will create a selection around your subjects of the image which is what we want. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and go to the selection editor dialog box. If you don't have it they're called a dockable dialogs and you're going to go up to Windows, go to Dockable Dialogs, and then go to Selection Editor here. When you click it, it'll pop up on the side here. If you have it already, it's probably somewhere here. Just click the arrows. And here it is. The next button you're going to do is press this Selection to Path. Then you're going to go to Windows again, Dockable Dialogs, and open Paths and you'll see that your path here has been made. Now next thing we want to do is create a stroke around this path. So go ahead and right click the path here in the path dialog and click path tool. This will basically create the uh, the path tool with the path we will create basically the path with the path tool. After that you want to go back to your layers. You want to create a new layer. We don't want to put the stroke on top of um, this layer with the people. We want to put the stroke on a new layer. So create a new transparent layer. We're going to click new layer and transparency. And everything else can be the same. So then we have the background layer. We have the layer with the subjects. And then we have the transparent layer. On the transparent layer, you want to click the um, well I just messed up because I changed a tool if this happens to you if you if you mess up then just go back to your paths right here and then again click path tool and on your new transparent layer you want to click stroke path here at the bottom left and here it kind of varies how big you want your stroke to be. I'm going to make my stroke 10. And then you want to go ahead and click the eye icon next to the uh, the layer with the um, subjects. And then you want to go ahead and click a random tool so all these dots go away. Uh, select none so the selection goes away. Now you should now um, you want to make sure that you color this stroke white, not black. If you make the same mistake as I did here, just click the uh, layer with your stroke here, 
go to alpha to selection again and then all you can do all you have to do is basically use a brush change this foreground color to white use a big enough brush and then just color over it like that now if you already had your foreground color set to white and when you click stroke then you obviously still need to do this so just go ahead and do that remember it's right click the stroke layer alpha to selection and then color it white with a large brush after that you want to go filter blur Gaussian blur and you want to do a radius of two once again this is up to preference if you want to have it more blurry then you can make it higher but I'm gonna use two and then we're gonna go ahead and change the layer mode which is up here we're gonna use the layer mode to soft light so after we've changed our layer mode to soft light what you want to then do is right click the layer with your stroke and duplicate it about four times once again this is up to preference you can duplicate it three times two times uh, it's up to you but you see once you go a little too many duplicates I think I'm actually gonna keep it at two duplicates for some pictures it's better to have like four duplicates other pictures good to have three duplicates but yeah, I think three duplicates or two duplicates is fine I'm gonna go three duplicates and from here on you're basically done like this is basically your uh, your light painting your lighting painting whatever you want to call it uh, this is how you do it there's some there's some other cool stuff you can do also <coughs> for example um, you can do this with anything you can you can even like draw something or use a shape uh, for example say you wanted to draw like well let's use a shape because shapes are easier say you wanted to you know create like sort of something like that right behind the uh behind the uh, dancers here like a little ellipses make sure you always use a new layer always use a new layer for everything so uh, we have our ellipses here and we want to go ahead and do the same thing again we have our selection here so we want to go to the selection editor then go over here, go to Selection to Path again. Basically the same thing that we've been doing. And then we have our selection here. We want to make sure we go to our Paths dialog. Then go to Path Tool, right? And then we want to go Stroke Path. And Stroke again. So now that you have your Stroke, click somewhere else select none if you want to get this behind them all you gotta do is drag this right underneath I want to do the same thing again change the layer mode to soft light and then if you want to duplicate it a few times like maybe two times or three times you'll see that it also works with things that you draw or you create within GIMP2. It doesn't it doesn't only it doesn't only work with, you know, objects or subjects or people or stuff like that. It also works with, you know, things that you create within GIMP. You know, if you're drawing something in GIMP or you're uh, sketching something or creating some sort of effect, then you can also do this. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, one thing I do want to show you, let's go ahead and take this ellipse off. I just wanted to show you guys that you can actually, you know, um, use the tools over here to recreate this effect. But what I want to try to do is I'm going to try ahead and change this background. And we're actually going to, like, change this background to something else. Let's go to Open as Layers. And let's use, let's use this color for one. And it's kind of small. I'm not sure if this will even properly work. 
because it's a bit small. Hopefully it'll show you guys though. But as you can see, if we, like you see, you can tell that you can really put it under any type of um, background and it'll keep the, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll change the lighting strokes accordingly. Which is pretty cool. So, that's the tutorial guys for you. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully uh, it uh, helped you if you were looking for something like this. Or, you know, if you just come to my channel on, on a regular basis. Then hopefully you have uh, something new to use now in your, you know, tools of design. Uh, it's a great little feature. You can create some really cool banners with this or logos or whatnot. So um, we're going to be creating more GIMP tutorials in the future. Uh, for all of you who use Photoshop a lot, I tend to not create too many Photoshop tutorials because, you know, the majority of the people have GIMP. But I have a, a Photoshop tutorial coming next, I believe, or it's the video after the next. It's either the next video or the video after the next. So don't worry, we'll be getting to that. Um, that's, any, that's pretty much it. If any, if any questions or any comments, feedback, as always, leave it in the comments, and I will respond to them as soon as possible. See you guys next time. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video helped you out in any way. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It'll really help me out. If you didn't like it, you can leave a comment as well, giving some feedback. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comments as well, and I'll do my best to answer them. I usually respond to comments within 24 to 48 hours, depending on your question and depending on how busy I am. I have plenty of other content on my channel about different software tutorials and how-to videos, so if you're interested in that type of stuff, check it out. And if you like what you're seeing, you can subscribe too. Really appreciate it. You can also check out my other channels and social media as shown on the screen right now. And with that, thank you so much everyone. And this is GS Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.